Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Check Me. Uh, let's cover uh, this uh, USC uh, Colorado game we got coming up. Um, I want to talk about some things to look for on the Colorado side, some things to look for on the USC side, um, and the kind of keys that we're really going to determine this game, um, the victory, who wins, who wins this game. So. Uh, just looking at the Colorado side, the question we're going to ask ourselves is how can Colorado win this game? I think the one thing Colorado wants to focus on is slowing the game down. Uh, USC uh, plays uh, a fast pace of football. Um, they have weapons on receiver. At receiver, they have weapons in the running, at the, uh, running back. And, of course, they have the, the Heisen Trophy winner, who's a general leading that team, who has not thrown an interception yet this season. He's only been sacked five times, um, and uh, he's hard to bring down. He's been wildly efficient. Uh, almost uh, 74% uh, you know, completion percentage this year. But the receivers they have, uh, Taj Washington, Brendan Rice, uh, Ze- uh, Zechariah Branch, uh, Mario Williams. Um, you know, you talk about one of the, uh, ideally the best receiving cores, including the, the, the GOAT, uh, Jerry Rice's son, Brendan Rice, um, that you've seen uh, out of USC in years. I think we may be looking at one right now. Um, and then the defense is playing a little bit better this year. Um, although, although they haven't, you know, completely gone in torpedo teams like, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, just, you know, just laid, laid on the ground the teams last year. They did last year. I think they, they're doing decent this year. Um, they did give up 28 points against Arizona State, uh, 28 points against San Jose State. Um, but they gave it 10 points against uh, Stanford, which was a good defense showing. Um, and, you know, they've done pretty well as far as turning the ball over. They've forced eight fumbles. They've recovered four. Um, they have one interception. So, you're looking at a, a better sound defense. So if Colorado wants to win this game, there's a couple things they have to do as far as when they say slow the, the game down, that's a lot. Um, that means emphasizing, emphasize running the ball, um, making sure that, you know, if you can't run the ball, your short passes or your runs, you know, where you can pick up a three, four yard, um, you know, uh, 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 catch and then uh, kind of slow the pass rush down. Whatever you can do to extend drives, you have to win on third down, um, you know, and not get into third down situations. So, uh, you know, third and five, third and eight, et cetera, those are going to be tough situations where you're going to have to play defense. You're going to have to play ball. I mean, play offense, you got to play ball. Um, and, that, and the same thing on defense, you know, three and outs, right? You, you don't want the better – USC gets better the, uh, the longer their offense is on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, um, on the field. So you want to get them out of the situations. You know, you want to make sure that – make it tough for them. Slowing the game down takes a lot as well, too, when it comes to execution. Right? Are you executing? Are you not jumping off sides? Are you making sure you're, you know, uh, keeping your defense assignments, uh, uh, um, uh, being, staying disciplined in defense assignments? What I expect, that, that's the first thing. The first thing is slow the game down. Uh, run the ball, control line of scrimmage, um, you know, short passes, uh, and not getting stuck into third down situations. Uh, and that's on both sides of the ball. The second key to win for Colorado would be uh, keeping Caleb Woods in the pocket. Uh, I think that Caleb Williams is an exceptional passer, but a lot of his improvision is how he, uh, you know, gets some of his best plays. You know, get to Caleb Williams or just keep him in the pocket, make him throw. You know, let him, let's see how good of a quarterback he is and how patient he is by throwing the short stuff. You know, um, I would expect a lot of, and that mean, what does that mean if you keep him in the pocket? A lot of cloud coverage, um, you know, keep everything, you know, in front of you. Um, you have some weapons who can take the ball deep. So I might see a lot of quarters, might see a lot of, uh, uh, no, I don't want to see two at all. Uh, three, uh, you know, I might see uh, cover nine, cover six. Uh, but anything that can essentially keep him, uh, keep those receivers in front of you uh, and then allow Caleb Williams to just be patient, nickel and dime him. Sometimes quarterbacks of Caleb Williams' caliber, they get impatient with throwing the check down, throwing the, you know, intermediate route. Test them. But that will also test the defense out. Um, they're going to be look. Oh, so USC is going to be looking for explosive plays. So anyway, anything you can do to uh, uh, mitigate that from a defensive standpoint is going to help. So and that will keep him in the pocket. Keep him in the pocket. Keep him in the pocket. Don't allow him to kill you with his legs, whether it's pa- uh, running the pass or just running itself. Uh, but that's the second thing Colorado has to do. So you have slow the game down. Keep Caleb Williams in the pocket. Uh, and then I, I this is a this is a kind of a. A, a nuance, a nuance thing. They have to understand and believe that they belong there. I think playing Oregon kind of, and may have they're not, but diminished their. Hey, are, are we really this good? Um, you know, uh, uh, mentality. USC is gonna be coming to play, but also understand. Hey, you even though it's the number eight team in college football, you can come in and punch this team in the mouth, or you can. They they, they can't come into your territory and punch this team in the mouth. Um, you have to walk. You know, walk and play with your foot in the dirt. 
you know, put your cleats in the dirt and push forward. There's going to be a massive crowd here, you know, with celebrities, stars, NBA players, um, you know, uh, there at the game. So it's going to be important that you, you know, you you use that cl- that crowd for you. So utilizing the crowd, keeping Caleb Williams in the pocket, and then slowing the game down. The three things for Colorado to win. Now for USC, it's a little bit, USC is a little bit different. Um, USC is going to have to, and this may seem tricky, but um, I think they're going to have to run the ball. The run's going to open up the pass, and um, you know, uh, it may sound like, well, they got Caleb Williams, they have weapons at receiver. This is a chess match. If, this, if they come in trying to pass the ball, Lincoln Riley tries to come in, Lincoln Riley comes in, tries to pass the ball, and then Colorado's in cloud coverage. Um, you know, now, and, and they get some points on the board, they're, you get to play from ahead. You know, you play from behind. That's not what you want to do when someone's, you know, a hometown facility that hasn't had a big game in years uh, with the crowd behind them. So uh, I think establishing the run is going to be important. The run is going to open up the pass, uh, whether it's your quick game, your short game. Uh, be, don't be don't be impatient with what Colorado is showing you. Um, and, but also, uh, you know, like take what take what they're giving you and run the ball. You have Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, what's the other guy's name? Um, we have Marshawn Lloyd and uh, Austin Jones who uh, run the ball quite a bit. Um, and they also used, you know, Zachariah Branch and then uh, what's his Mario Williams as well, you know, doing right. – Mario, Mario Williams hasn't ran a lot this year. They've done a lot with Zachariah ban- Branch. Not a lot, but they've done quite a bit with Zachariah Branch. Um, but, you know, focus on running the ball, open up the pass. The second thing is the defense is going to have to play. Um, I think after that offense elapsed last year, uh, uh, Kyle Riles, you know, last week, Kyle Riles will be coming sharp. Um, Shador Sanders is, you know, he's a good passer. Uh, he, I mean, he has 1,400 yards this year. He's only thrown one interception with like 11 touchdown passes. Yeah, I mean, he's 70, he's 76 percent completion percentage. Um, he has been sacked 22 times. Um, so uh, you you have to you know um, force Shador off of his off of his spots. Um, you know, get to him. He's been sacked 22 times for a reason. Um, you know, maybe him holding the ball on too long, them not protecting him. Um, but he's a very smart quarterback. Uh, I personally think when it comes to him passing, passing in the pocket, he, he's one of the best, if not the best, in college football from what I've personally seen. Um, I really haven't seen anybody pass in the pocket um, better than Shador and just be patient with what the defense is giving, giving him throughout the game. He's smart. He's a, such a smart quarterback. And I'm not saying this because he's Deion's son or whatever. If you know me, I don't, I don't really care for that. I just think that he was completely undersold and underrated when he came out of high school, and he's only gotten better to this point. And I have to attribute that to him, himself, his family, and his father. Um, but he, he 76% completion, almost 77% completion percentage, uh, 1,400 yards. Um, the guy is a miss, you know. So if USC can, you know, get to him, you know, get him off his spots, make him throw under pressure, uh, they can, you know, force, force some fumbles, maybe, maybe force some interceptions. But that's kind of the main thing that you want to do, uh, main thing on defense. The third thing is you have better athletes at USC. Um, you know, make sure your athletes are outperforming. Make sure your athletes are ready to play. Let them know the matting two of this game and how big it is, not just because it's Colorado, but also because this is for, you know, BCS National Championship. Um, uh, I'm sorry, college football playoff, uh, um, uh, college football playoff uh, uh, ranking. So we have – we have um, – we have a good dynamic here. I think we're gonna have a good football game. I don't. I don't think that Colorado. This is a big win for Colorado. If Colorado gets this win, it's gonna be a big win for the program. But also, it's gonna kind of make that Oregon loss look a little bit tainted. Um, what I mean by it is they they're going to Oregon. They're not without their best player. Uh, but if Colorado can pull this off, um, you know, I think this would be a big win for Colorado. It will be a big win for Colorado. Big win for you know for Dion. Big win for his you know for his son for, for his sons. Um, but th- this is what I'm looking for in the game. With USC, understand this. The first half is not going to tell you a story. And, and they're so, they, they play so well. Like I said, the offense gets better the more they're on the field. They get so good, good late in games. They get better late in games. And typically when you watch a football game and you watch the flow of a football game, you kind of got a good idea of how the second half is gonna gonna go, uh, based off of matchups, tendencies, uh, trends, um, uh, how the athletes are starting playing. Um, you now, what's so you can kind of see USC is so so tricky. USC doesn't show those telltale signs. USC will play, have a horrible first half and then have a amazing second half, which we've seen over the past couple of years. Um, 
And then sometimes they'll have a great first half and have an abysmal second half. You know, um, it depends. So you have to watch four quarters of this game to really see what's going to happen. And I do believe whoever whoever's winning is going to have to play four quarters of football throughout the rest of this game. So we'll see what happens. Uh, looking for a good game, though.